All right, thanks for watching. And here is a cool Pascal identity you probably never thought of. Because consider Pascal's triangle. So the branches are one, one. And the baby is the sum of the parents. So two, and then one, I believe three, three, one, and then one, four, six, four, one, etc. And this time, we want to consider the product of every row. So P of zero, that's one, P of one, so product is one times one, which is one, P of two would be two, P of three, so one times three times three times one, nine, P of four, one times four times six times four times one, so 96, etc., etc. And for each value, we want to consider the product of the past and the future divided by the present squared. So consider what we call p of n minus 1 times p of n plus 1 over p of n squared. So for instance, in this case, let's say for n equals 3, that would be 2 times 96 over 9 squared, which in this case, I believe it simplifies to 64 over 27, which I believe roughly is 2.37. So that would be for n equals 3, and the question is, what happens as n goes to infinity? And the answer is very surprising, so bear with me. Okay, so step one, let's find a nice formula for p of n. So p of n, remember, that's the product of all the numbers in row n. So the product from k from 0 to n. Now the kth value is n choose k, which is really the product from k from 0 to n of n factorial over k factorial, n minus k factorial. And same thing for a p of n plus 1. So that is the product from k from 0 to n plus 1 of n plus 1, choose k. And that's really the product from k from 0 to n plus 1 of n plus 1 factorial over k factorial, n plus 1 minus k factorial. Now, just one little thing, so which will be useful very soon, because we want to compare the ratios eventually. But notice, for n plus 1, so for k equals n plus 1, this becomes 1, and then this cancels out with n plus 1 factorial. So the term at n plus 1 is just 1. In particular, this product is really just the product from 0 to n of all those values. And once again, this is useful now to compare the ratios, because now, as you'll see in a second while we need to do that, let's compare p of n plus 1 and p of n. But now we have our beautiful formulae, so this becomes a product from k from 0 to n of, again, n plus 1 factorial over k factorial, n plus 1 minus k factorial, divided by the product from k from 0 to n of n factorial over a k factorial, and then n minus k factorial. Which now, since everything starts from 0 to n, we can just treat it as one ratio. So this becomes, maybe here, big product, oh my god, k from 0 to n of 
So n plus 1 factorial, factorial over k factorial, n plus 1 minus k factorial, and then you flip this, so k factorial, n minus k factorial, k factorial, n minus k factorial over n factorial. And then there are a lot of cute simplifications. So this k factorial cancels out and then n plus one factorial over n factorial is just n plus one. And here also, this is the bigger power. So you can just write this as a little blob. And in the end, this becomes a product from k from zero to n of n plus 1 over n plus 1 minus k. So the factorials cancel out. That's kind of nice, or at least it's simplified. And the good news is we can simplify this even further because this n plus 1 is just a constant with k. And we multiply this n plus 1 times. So really, this becomes n plus 1 to the n plus 1. And then the product from k from 0 to n of 1 over n plus 1 minus k. So that's what we had so far. So the successive ratios is n plus 1 to the n plus 1 times this product, but we can now write out that product explicitly. So that's n plus 1 to the n plus 1, and then 1 over n plus 1 times 1 over n times 1 over n minus 1, all the way up to 1. And one thing to notice, so one of those powers here cancels out. And what is the rest? So n times n minus 1 up to 1, which is just factorial. So in the end, you get n plus 1 to the n over n factorial. So that is the ratio of the future and the present. And of course, you can do the same thing for the present and the past. So the just by replacing n plus 1 with n, you get pn over pn minus 1 just becomes n to the n minus 1 over n minus 1 factor. And now we can somehow use those pieces to conclude and take the limit. And you will see, it's a very unexpected answer. And now, are you ready for the grand finale? Because now we can get our really unexpected answer. So remember, the quantity we tried to consider was the past times the future over present squared. And the cool thing is, we can now write this in terms of the two pieces we got in the previous step. Because, that is just pn plus 1 over pn over pn over pn minus 1. So the ratio is just the ratio of future over present and present over past. And now we can use our pretty formula that we got previously. So this is n plus 1 to the n over n factorial over n to the n minus 1 over n minus 1 factorial. And this we can simplify now because that is n plus 1 to the n over n to the n minus 1 and then times n minus 1 factorial over n factorial. And here's the coolest simplification here. So this thing just becomes 1 over n. So n plus 1 to the n over n to the n minus 1. 
times one over n, which now combines with this denominator. So it's n plus one to the n over n to the n, which now becomes n plus one over n to the n, which is one plus one over n to the n. And the question is, what happens as n goes to infinity? Really surprisingly, the answer goes to e. Oh my god! I mean, who would have guessed that? Would you ever have thought that e comes out of a Pascal's triangle? I was very surprised. All right. If you like this and want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.